Hi friends, hello, happy Friday. We're here, it's Friday. Oh, in Maryland, it is pouring today, pouring. So I had to break out all the lights. It's a little gray, it's, you know, raining. It's a rainy, rainy, rainy fall day. So I hope it's beautiful where you are. I have a really fun tutorial I'm gonna share today. If you're here with me live, pop a comment in the chat. Just let me know if you can hear everything. And um, yeah, it looks like all systems are go. Really fun card today. And a little bit of watercolor tutorial sprinkled in. So I think we're just going to dive in. Couple little announcements before we get going. We have, I had a brand new release this week with Gina K Designs. It's called Something Wonderful. It's a pomegranate set. We're using that today. Um, all of the links for everything that I'm using in today's live are listed in, down below in the description. Um, yeah, so all good there. And I'll walk through everything. So hi, Connie. She's saying hello from St. Louis. I know people are popping in. I might have not have given everything enough time to, um, you know, that little lag that we have at the beginning here on YouTube. But, okay, we are going to dive right into the tutorial. Hello, Robbie. She made it. Happy Crafting Friday. Yes. Hello, Rhonda. Everybody's starting to pop in now, so that's really great. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm super excited on this rainy, rainy day in Maryland. Okay, so... Today's tutorial, shall we charcuterie? You're going to get what I mean. Okay, I'm doing a really fun stamp set mashup. So let's go ahead, head to the down camera, and let's get going. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome in from Salt Lake City. Okay, friends, here we are. This is the card inspiration for today. We are doing a fun holiday card mashup with Count It All Joy, which is my char charcuterie set, and something wonderful, and a little bit of Hello Helen from Australia. It's 3 a.m. on Saturday. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Well, thank you for joining us. 3 a.m. I would be asleep. So I'm also going to be using some of the Ephemera from the Poinsettia kit. The Ephemera is, was in the Poinsettia kit, but it's now you can buy it separately. So kind of fun, kind of fun. So shall we charcuterie? It's going to be a fun holiday card. So let's go ahead real quick through our supplies. So I've got here, let's bring this over. I'm going to show you, I'm using the Sentiments from the, they're, I think they're called uh, winter sentiments or season sentiments. Here is the ephemera that you can now buy in a separate pack. So super fun. I really love this watercolory look and these bright and vibrant reds and greens. And I thought they'd be great for our tutorial today. So I'm using those. Um, I'm using the little berries from that set. So, um, well, Helen, I'm sorry you can't sleep. That makes me a little sad. Okay. Hi, Janice. I'm using some Gina K Designs Ruby Slipper uh, sequins. I've got my paper here. I'm using what I always use. <laughs> and if you've been watching me live and watching my channel for a while, I'm using Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. I'm using cold pressed paper today. And um, because I'm using some Ink Tense pencils, and I'm going to get into that in a minute, I've got some craft cardstock cut to an a2 size card perfect ready to roll these are my um these are my 100 percent cotton papers i'm using some distress inks tea dye and vintage photo and these are the three gina k inks i'm using dark spruce medium spruce and cherry red and i'm going to tell you if you i love this cherry red i absolutely love it but it will, if the, this bothers you, reconsider using this color because it does stain your stamp, which it doesn't bother me. So, okay, I've got intense pencils here and I've got a white pencil. We'll see how this white gel pencil work, pen works later because sometimes my pencils don't, I have problems with gels. 
Okay, I'm using Derwent Ink Tense Pencils today. Now, I've done a couple tutorials with Ink Tense Pencils. I'm using Sun Yellow, Cherry, and Ionian Green. Ink Tense Pencils are amazing, and I'll do a, another little like breakdown of these pencils when we get started. But, all right, I've got a little cheat sheet here. Here we go. So if you want to take a quick screenshot, this is the little cheat sheet of the, the inks and the ink tense pencils that I'm using in this tutorial. So three, two, one, screenshot, shampoo. Okay. And they're also listed down below in the description. So there we go. All right. So we're going to get started. We're going to stamp everything out first. We're going to talk today about watercoloring and using your inks as a watercolor medium and using the ink tense pencils to do some really easy going watercolor, okay? So super fun card tutorial today. Don't hesitate to ask questions along the way. We're gonna dive in. I'm gonna start off with the charcuterie board. So this stamp set, Count It All Joy, came out earlier in the year and I absolutely love it. And I was inspired by all the <clears throat> charcuterie boards that are that have become like really popular and I thought it would be really fun today to use them <clears throat> because as we head into the holidays and we're using pomegranates it's just kind of a fun modern take on card making also this charcuterie board can be easily used as a tag so before I put it on the card. We're going to talk about how you can use it as a tag, a holiday tag. So I'm going to start out. Hello, Cheryl, Connie, a bunch of people are popping in. Hello, everyone. I'm going to start out with tea dye and vintage photo. I'm going to be using vintage photo as a um, watercolor medium, and I'm also going to be using tea dye. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink up my charcuterie board really gently. I'm not going for a really big solid impression with this stamp. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp her down and then immediately get started right in on the water coloring. So I've got a brush here, I've got a little bit of water, and first I'm going to start, my paper is dry, my brush is wet. I'm going to just run my brush around the edges. Now, Distress Inks, Gina K Inks, I talked about this last week. They're all, they have the ability to use them as a watercolor medium. So I'm softening the edges here with the water. Just going in and softening those edges and just kind of breaking up that pigment, breaking up that dye actually, it's dye and getting it to move and just softening and getting the edge to move. And this is going to give it a little bit more of a realistic board, like wood look when I'm finished. So I'm just going in here. Now I'm going to come in and I'm just adding some water to the center here. Kind of soften those edges pretty nicely. Just adding some water. I'm going to take a little bit of my tea dye down onto my mat, my glass mat here. Okay. And then just get it wet and just use it as a watercolor medium. I'm going to drop it in and just let it float all around here in my charcuterie board. So while I'm painting, I'm going to talk a little bit about charcuterie boards. I've never made one personally. Um, but I think it's kind of cool. You just get that wooden board and which is like a cutting board, I guess, or what we used to use as a cutting board, but now that they're, they're a little more decorative, just, I'm just taking the tea dye and you can see I'm also leaving some white spaces here. I'm going to make a little bit more of a darker edge over here just to give it a little bit of variety. But when you watercolor, when you want to leave white, you just don't paint in those areas. And this is kind of giving it a washy wood look. So I'm gonna let that ride the way it is. 
and we're going to end up letting that dry. But back to the charcuterie boards. So like I said, I've never made one, but I just recently saw something. You can all tell me in the comments if, if you've seen this. People are now doing them and they call them butter boards. So they slather butter all over the charcuterie board. And then they add like fruits and vegetables and different things in the butter. And I guess it's like not just it must be like flavored butters and things like that. And then you like use it as a dip. And I'm like, ooh, a butter board. I don't know about that. I'd have to see one or make one or try one before I would do it. But I thought it was kind of interesting. Who knows? Like snacking at a whole new level on a board. Okay. I'm going to take this vintage photo. I'm going to put a little bit down on my glass mat here. And what I'm trying to do is just create a little bit more of a darkness over here. Just a little bit more of a two-tone. So the vintage photo, these two colors, the um, vintage photo and the tea dye are really great kind of neutral like browns to work with from the distress line and I wanted to do some easy breezy watercolor today so these fit the bill you could also use like from the Gina K line you could use whoa, you could use uh, craft you could use chocolate brown you could use any of the browns and and get the same kind of effect okay so I really, I'm preserving my lights over here because my concentration of my design as far as the pomegranates and all of the leafery and the greenery is going to be coming out that direction. So I want it to be light to dark going in that direction. So I'm going to give that a moment to dry and then we're going to come back over top of it with another layer. Helen just said, I've seen one done with hummus on the bottom rather than butter. There you go. That makes good sense. That makes sense to me. Hummus. But the butter ones really kind of blew me away. Okay. I'm going to have to try the hummus. I love hummus. All right. Now we're going to stamp out. I'm going to stamp out my elements. So, which, you know, never bothered to show you the stamp sets. So let's get to that, right? So something wonderful. I'm using the leafery here. I'm using this pomegranate and that pomegranate and the coordinating dies. And from Count It All Joy, oops, here's the set. Let's put a little piece of white paper behind it. Here's the Count It All Joy set. You can tell mine is well loved. We're using the charcuterie board and I'm also using the wood grain in the set and the coordinating die to cut it. So we'll be cutting that out in a moment once it dries but let's go ahead got that die right there let's go ahead and get some of the other elements stamped while this dries up a little bit so i've got the little pomegranate the little baby pomegranate and this is going to be a solid so we're not going to be doing any coloring with this but it's going to be a companion to its sister pomegranate and we're going to be doing our ink tense coloring of that all right, I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. This cherry red is super juicy. I'm going to ink that up right there and just put that down right here. Now, what I love about this is that cherry red is just gorgeous. Now, if I want to go in and I want to blend out some of the, I want to make some of this color move a little bit on this watercolor, I can just add a little bit of water working kind of quick and just kind of make it move. Just take some of it out, make it move and get a little bit of that white paper texture in there. You can see. Ah, oh, love it. That cherry red is super juicy, but it does stain your stamp. If that's something that bothers you, be mindful of that if you're going to use cherry red. It doesn't bother me because I like using my stamps to their I like them to be the star of the show, so everything I have is stained. And I don't clean things very well, and I should. I should, I should, I should, but I don't. Okay, here's our baby pomegranate, or our sister pomegranate. I'm going to go ahead and ink her up with a little bit of cherry red. Stamp her down, because we're going to be coloring her up and cutting her out. 
Okay, clean her off a little bit. Let's go ahead and move them over. And now we're gonna bring in the leafery. Now in the Something Wonderful set, I'm gonna talk about the leafery for a minute. In the Something Wonderful set, there's three different sets of leafery. And in the leafery, you know, this will be a better way. Let me show it to you this way. If you got this, if you watched my um, CM set walkthrough video, I showed this. The leafery, I have branches that are not closed off because that is where you can place your pomegranate or your blooms right there in the leafery branches. I've just kind of made that for you. Now, if you don't like that, you can always take a little black pen and just close them up, close each one of them up and just let the leafery go the way it is. Okay. Let's go ahead and stamp out the leafery. I am going to stamp out the leafery in medium spruce. You could use whatever light green you have. The, the, Intense pencil that I'm going to be using is darker than this. Let's just go ahead and stamp that right there. Is darker than this. So those lines are going to just disappear over time. So let's go ahead and pull that off. All right, let's come back to. Oh, she's still a little bit wet, but that's okay. Hello, Cherie. She just popped in. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm coming back to my charcuterie board before I cut these. Oh, oh, friends, forgot one more thing. Where would I be without forgetting this poor little piece of branch leafery? I forgot about her in the intro video and I just forgot about her again. <laughs> We're gonna use dark spruce and medium spruce and I'm gonna stamp her out. So these two branches, or pine-like branches. We're gonna do one in a dark and one in a light, a lighter color. Just stamp her out so that we have a little bit of contrast from light to dark. Okay, I'm a goober. Sometimes I forget things. Okay, so let's take a look. Look at this board. I mean, Look at the color. Now I could add a little more intensity right there and bring it over, but I'm not going to because I'm digging it the way it looks. Now I'm going to go over top of it. I'll go ahead and lay this stamp down with the wood grain. I'm going to turn this sideways. It'll be a little bit easier to manage. Now I'm going to go over top of all of this. I'm trying to decide. Do I want it to be really dark with vintage photo or I'm going to do tea dye? I'm going to do more of a tone on tone and let's see what we get. So I'm going to go over top the whole thing, the wood green, over top the whole charcuterie board with some tea dye. Let's go ahead and gently ink this up. <laughs> Robbie said, welcome to my world. I forget all the things all the time. You know what, Robbie? Some, I think it's because we're always thinking about lots of things all at once. So sometimes words are hard. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stamp that out. We've got our tabs, like a computer would have all these different tabs open in, um, you know, in a, in a web browser. It, that's our brains, right? Ooh, love. Okay, loving it. Now, loving the way this looks. Eek, 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 eek. I love it. Look at the white we've got right here. So we've got a nice dark to light. All right, I'm going to go ahead. Too many tabs open. Agreed. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these elements real quick right here. I should get one of those cameras that goes on my die cutter, right? That would be fun. Um, or boring, one or the other. Like, do you really want to see me die cutting? You can hear the crunch, 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 crunch. If I bring it into the shot, it ends up moving the table too much. And I don't like that, so we're not going to do that. Okay. All right, I've got my pieces cut. Boop, 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 boop. We've got all our little pieces. Boop, boop. 
Now we're going to do some water coloring with some ink tense pencils. But hey, look at our charcuterie board. This alone could just be a tag, a gift tag. And when I design this, get all the things all over this. We're going to show you what it looks like just as a gift tag. Hi, Irma. Okay, it looks like I boogered it up and got some other color on there. But, you know. All right, we've got a little hole. There's a hole built in here. And I want that hole to really be a hole. So I'm just taking this little hole puncher thing that I found in my stash. Don't have a clue when I bought it, probably a decade ago. But hey, any kind of hole puncher, normal hole puncher will punch that hole. So great for the car, great for a gift tag. All right, I'm gonna set this aside for a moment. I've got all of my elements. We know we're not gonna be coloring that one. We know we're not gonna be coloring that one. We're gonna be coloring these two. But first, let's do a little demo. Let's talk a little bit about ink tents. I've talked about them before, but it might have gone a little bit quickly. I'm going to show to show you today what the technique is for the ink tents. We're going to do a little bit of layering. And the ink tents pencils are very, very similar to colored pencils or watercolor pencils. Color pencils, though, you are not water soluble. So once you lay them down, you have to use Gamsol to kind of um, activate that pigment and move it around and make it look watercolory. If colored pencils is something you're interested in learning more about, drop it something in the comments. I've been thinking about sharing what I know about color pencils. Um, Gina is amazing with colored pencils. I very rarely use them in my lives, but I do use them in my work. So um, if you're interested in learning more about colored pencils on these lives, just drop, yes, I'd love to learn more about colored pencils down in the comments, and I'll work that into a future live for us. Okay, ink tense pencils. I've talked about these. I'm obsessed with them. They're super, super vibrant. They are just unique. In that they act like a pen, they act like a colored pencil, but when you activate them with water, they they act like a watercolor pencil, and then they dry permanent because it's an ink ink tense, meaning it's intense ink. So kind of fun. So the technique that we're going to do today is we're going to do some layering. So I'm a left-hander. I tend to hold when I want to layer. I hold my pencil out pretty far so I don't choke up because I'm very heavy handed and I know if you choke up and you start uh, coloring on your paper, you're going to scratch that fiber in the paper. So if you hold your pencil out and you just lay it on its side a little bit, you'll be able to get an even more even application of the pencil. And this is the same for colored pencils too. It feels awkward at first. It feels very awkward at first. But the beautiful thing about these intense pencils is that you can layer them. So I can do this first layer, then I can do another layer, then I can do another layer, or I can just keep going over top of it, like turn it this way. If I just wanted to use these intense pencils as a coloring medium, like a color, like color pencil. I could just leave it that way. But you know me, we don't do that. We're just always like, how can we make this look like watercolor? How can we have some fun with this? So I'm just laying a nice little application of color here. And then I'm going to show you, I'm going to also use another color, sun yellow. I could use a lighter pink here. But I'm going to take this sun yellow. You can see me see me starting to hold it like this because I want to get that angle. I just want to get it on its side. And I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. I'm very heavy handed as a left hander. I don't know if that's a left hand thing, but I'm very heavy handed. I'm just kind of applying these two colors together and letting them bleed together right here. Because when I go in with some water, now the beautiful thing is I'm going to take this pigment, I've got water, just a, a regular, I think this is a number six brush, whatever brush you have, you don't need a special brush for this, and then just activate 
it just the ink tense is just that it's intense ink I'm using that color and look how far out I can go with that color before it starts to fade out I kind of digress there a little bit okay so now I want to bleed these two colors together and I'm just taking my pencil and kind of I mean taking my brush and kind of scrubbing it a little bit to bleed those two colors together I love this it is gorgeous and that's just one layer of color so we're gonna do this layering technique on the pomegranate so the pomegranate is going to have a cherry red to sunny yellow kind of look to it so let's dive in I'm gonna be strategic about how I'm gonna lay that color down and if you have any questions about what I shared don't hesitate to ask or if you'd like to see something else. Now, normally I would color these. Let's, let's see if we can um, zoom in just a smidge. Okay. Normally I would color this before I would die cut it, but you know what? I did do that. I die cut them first. So I've got my pomegranate here. Let's see if I can take a little bit of tape. This idea might not work, but let's see. Just kind of tape it down just to kind of hold it down. Um, let's tape it this way. So what I want to do is I want to see a variegation of color. I want it to be a little bit of cherry red and then get a little bit of yellow over here. So I'm going to start by just applying some color. I'm holding my pencil out pretty far and I'm only going to apply some color to one side. So I'm holding it out pretty far. That, that is not going to work. <laughs> I want to put my finger down here. You know what? I got my pokey picker here from Gina K. Let's just use that to kind of hold it down. That didn't work either. Well, Lisa, let's turn it this way. I did not plan that properly, friends. Let's turn it this way. I'm just going to hold it down a little bit. And I'm just going to start to apply some color in here just a little bit here you can see I'm just laying it down I'm not going to cover the whole thing resist the urge I'm gonna come around here and resist the urge to cover the whole thing I am going to come down a little bit further around this edge okay there we go now I'm going to come in with a little bit of the yellow and apply some of that yellow really and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch them this time except for over here okay there we go let me add a little bit up here so right here we're just gonna come in on just gently you really don't need to push very very hard with these pencils or with any other watercolor pencil for the most part or colored pencils I think I'll be honest where I got my like heavy handedness in art in art supplies I think is from childhood using Crayolas and these you know other pencils where you really had to uh, scratch down really hard to get some good color on to your project I'm pretty sure that's where I got it you know when you think back you have one of those core childhood memories and I have that core childhood memory of struggling to color with my Crayolas anyway a little bit too much information right okay so now we're just gonna go ahead in and get this a little bit wet and just pick up some of that pigment <laughs> Irma said me too yeah it's all good so you can see it does not take much effort to get that pigment to lift Ooh, love it love it love it okay so now I'm gonna I clean my brush because I'm gonna work from the other side and I'm just gonna start to let these two colors exist together let them play together let them have some fun together and see how they do. Oh, 
She is so beautiful. I love it. All right, let's let's use my picker there and hold. Cherie said funny. I know, right? You never know. You never know what core childhood memory you're going to have. And that's the one I had. Okay. There we go. Digging it. Loving the way this looks. I'm thinking about adding another layer of color. And we can do that with ink tents. But let's just go ahead and set this to the side. With her friend. With her sister. Little big sister. Little sister. And we're going to move on to doing the same technique with the leafery. And this, I'm using Ionian Green. Let's take a sneaky peeky at what Ionian Green looks like. Let's bring our demo sheet back in. I love this color. But let's take a sneaky peeky at what it looks like so you can really see it. The reason why I like Ionian Green is because it's got a little blue in it. And... Christmas-like greenery, like pine and eucalyptus and, and greenery like that, has a little blue in it. It's not such a like a bright, vibrant green. It's got a little bit more of a blue in it. Everybody's popping in and saying they like to learn more about colored pencils. Oh boy, if you saw my stash. But I'll definitely work that into an upcoming live because I think it'll be fun. Because you can get watercolor tech effects with colored pencils using Gamsol and things like that. But look at that green. It's got a little blue in it. It's got some really pretty pigment. Um, if you, if I have on my website at indigojadeartshop.com, in my shop, I have craft, a Craft Your Joy watercolor um, exploration kit that I have pulled together. And some of the people that are in my watercolor wonderland class use it, are using it, but it doesn't have to be for that class. But in that kit, I have this color, Ionian Green. And I have three Inktense pencils in there, along with a lot of other really fun watercolor products that you can explore if you're just getting started or you're just interested in learning more. So um, yeah, that's in my shop, so super fun. Um, okay. All right. The ionian green is gorgeous. So let's go ahead and move on to our leafery here. Now this is, the leafery is kind of thin and delicate, but that's okay. Let's see. Let's see about moving in. Let's see if I can, I always worry about moving in and whether it retains its quality. I think that's good. Let's go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead in and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just laying down some color. It's an odd shape, but I'm only going to go about halfway across the leafery. And I am going to be a little more intense. Cherie just shared must have kit. So Cherie has that kit. Cherie is also in my watercolor wonderland class. So um, that kit's kind of fun. If you're really interested in watercolor, and you just don't, you just want to explore a little bit, check it out. It is, <clears throat> it is already deeply discounted in my um, store, indigojadeartshop.com. It's a great kit. I love putting art supply kits together, and I do that a lot with some of my classes. But then I have some kits that, you know, I try to make them if anybody's interested. So, so we've got a little bit more of a concentration of the dark greens here. Okay, there we go. And I'm adding a little bit more to those corners because I want that light to dark kind of look. So this is one way, dry application of the color is one way to get that intensity from dark to light. All right, let's come in here. I'm gonna hold this down. Let's see if that'll hold it. Nope, that's not gonna hold it. Let's just go in, I'll hold my fingers here. I'm coming in, I'm just gonna get some color here. Yeet! Kind of about halfway down. I'm not going to color that because I'm going to use what I have here and blend it out. All right, let's go in. Okay, friends, pop in the chat and tell me if you've started your Christmas shopping, your holiday card making, 
I like to take one holiday at a time, but I'll be honest, I have started a little bit of shopping. And um, I thought I was thinking about putting up my Christmas tree yesterday, and I got poo pooed from my family. They poo pooed my idea, and I actually, I just wanted to put up the tree with the lights, not the decorations. Because I just thought it would be fun and festive. And I like the lights at night. Okay, so you can see I've got that dark concentration of color. And then I've pulled that color all the way in here to get a lighter version. So dark to light. I'm going to come in and do the same thing for the other leaf. So I mentioned it. And I got a lot of side eyes, which means like, like raised eyebrows. And the answer, the general answer from the family was no. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. We'll see. Cherie says she started card making. That's great. I haven't made any holiday cards except for the ones I've been sharing with all of you in my lives and in social media. You can see I'm taking a little bit of this color. I'm swooshing a little bit of this and taking it down to the end of the leafery here. I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing that I did there, but I love this dark to light. And I, when I finish this, I'm gonna bring this up to the camera. Robbie said, I've not decorated my house, my own house in years. I decorate my mom's house for her because she loves it. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. And I just can't do two houses, she says. I hear you. I hear you. I only put up one tree. I don't put up multiple trees up in different locations like some people do. I Helen says she puts hers up on the 1st of December. I usually, we put it up the weekend after Thanksgiving. That's kind of been the rule since my kids were littles. They're not so little anymore. They're 19 and 21. Um, but that's kind of been the thing because we do host Thanksgiving here as well. But I'm not going to lie, friends. I really did think about it yesterday. Um, putting it up because I really wanted to see the twinkly lights. But anyway. Helen says she hasn't started her Christmas cards. Cheryl says she's just started sketching some ideas for hers. And Irma's bought two Christmas gifts so far. That's awesome. Me and my daughter do something. We call it Gilmore Girls Day. And the weekend after Thanksgiving... We do some Christmas shopping together. And again, we call it Gilmore Girls Day because we love Gilmore Girls and we've watched it together for many years as, as she was a preteen and then a teen. And and now. So, okay. Loving, loving, loving this leaf read. Let me pull this up. I'm going to show you this pigment. Oh, look at it. Okay, so this is the Ionian Green. You can see some of that granulation of the color. You see the little speckles in the color? That's the granulation. That's the pigment in the Ink Tense pencil. Gorgeous. It adds so much extra texture and dimension um, to the project. It is gorgeous. Okay. Oopsie. What is that? Something popped up on the screen. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, I'm coming back to the pomegranate. She looks a little lifeless. <laughs> she needs some more color. So we're going to go in. Um, I'm going to go in with some of the cherry. And we're going to add another layer here and just add some intensity back into this color. And that's the beautiful thing about the Ink Tense pencils is this is dry. Once it's dry, I could go back with a wet brush and try to move this color. And it's not going to move, friends, because it's ink and it's just permanent now. Cheryl said, we usually put up the tree either Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, when everyone's home. Same, same, same. So I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to put it up. I'm thinking about it, though. I'm still thinking about it. I woke up thinking about it. Because I like the twinkly lights. But anyway. 
I'm getting in the spirit and creating cards with you guys and just coming in here live and just being together and sharing. Sharing is my superpower. I've always, always been very, very crafty. Um, always love to make things with my hands. You can see that I've just add that intensity, another layer of that color. And I've always just loved, I have, again, a core childhood memory from like seven years old, learning how to um, crochet and knit. I've always wanted, always loved just sharing what I know. So it just brings me great joy to come in here and just kind of share all these things with you. And hope in hopes that it gives you some really nice inspiration to kind of get out your supplies and play. Now, if you don't have intense pencils, no worries. You don't need intense pencils to do this technique. You could use your watercolor pencils. You could even use your color pencils, but just with Gamsol, the great to create that look. Okay, digging it, loving the way this looks. Okay. We're ready to assemble the card. We are ready to assemble the card. Hopefully that'll dry. If not, I gotta zap it. All right, I'm gonna bring in some of the other ephemera. Now, this ephemera packet, I'm gonna use, I just really loved it because of the berries. So if you came in late, let me just pull that in and show it to you. Um, oh, thank you, Cherie. If you came in late, let me show it to you. This is the, and I've forgotten the name, and I wrote it down. Of course, the post-it note is on the other side of the room. This is just, these are two new pieces that were in the poinsettia kit from Gina K Designs. They're now sold separately. I love this. This is toner-based, so if you're a hot foiler, you like to do the foiling, this apparently, you can foil this whole thing. I haven't tried it yet. And here's the poinsettia ephemera kit. There's so many really beautiful pieces in here but I was super attracted to all the berries um, I even ordered more I ordered the poinsettia kit but I wanted more ephemera because ephemera to me is a lot like our leaf like it's a lot like our stamps they're just stamped down and die cut out but this is all pre-done for you which kind of makes it nice it's also going to add a little bit of extra texture and dimension a little bit of variety to this card Got some Gina K glue here. I'm a glue girl. I've talked about this in the past. Um, I, you know, I have had so many tape runners in my lifetime. And I even have that big old scotch tape runner that's like a beast. But I just like, whenever I've got a tape runner, win thank you, Cheryl, winter foliage set. I knew somebody would, would be able to look it up real quick or knew what it was called. Okay, I just got this piece of, I used watercolor paper, and I used the Master Layout Style, the one I use all the time, it's my favorite, and I'm just laying that down here. Now, you don't have to use watercolor paper, it's just that I had some left over with all these pieces that I was die cutting, so I decided to use that, and that's going to be my base, and we're going to go ahead and put on the charcuterie board. Now, just keep in mind, you could not make this as a card. You could easily layer all these little beautiful pomegranate pieces onto your charcuterie board, right? Let them hang off a little bit. Add a little bit of leafery. Let's see, like if I added some leafery here, and I added a little piece of leafery under there. Eh, I don't really like that, but you're getting the gist. Add a little piece of leafery here. Then I could take my sentiment from the sentiment, and I cut this out, the sentiment um, set. I cut this out with the um, sentiment strips. I never thought I needed these sentiment strip dry dies until I got them, and then I now I can't stop using them. So I cut out the sentiment. You could add the sentiment like right there, add a little piece of string, and you have the cutest, cutest gift tag you could use. This is a gift tag, 
Or what we're going to do is we're going to pop it on a card because that's what we do around here, right? Maybe next week I should do gift tags. Let me know what you think, friends. I've got lots of different stamps in our in my line and in my Gina K stash that would make great gift tags. Great gift tags, including this charcuterie board. Okay, so now for the design composition here, I'm going to focus that charcuterie board down in this lower corner. And I'm going to break the shape here by adding it to that lower corner because I want to have room over here on my edge for all of my leafery to go splooshing it out. So let's go ahead in. I've got a little bit of tape here, um, foam tape. This is some 3M, I think, or um, foam tape. I have some Gina K foam tape too. I'm gonna lay a piece of foam tape just down the center. I'm not going around my edges here because I'm gonna nest some things underneath it and I need the room. I don't want it bumping into the, um, the foam tape. So let's go ahead. I'm going to lay this down right here on my corner. Get that rid of that. Lay this right here. And I've got, everybody's saying they want to see more gift tags. Cool. Maybe we'll do that next week. Next week is the Friday before Thanksgiving. So everybody might be a little closer to thinking about holidays, right? I know everybody's thinking about it now, but let's do some fun gift tags. I think that would be fun. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do because I just said that's what we're gonna do, right? I'm gonna add this piece of leafery right here and just kind of use this corner as my anchor point so that I know where to place my piece of leafery. Got this right here. A little bit too much glue, but that's okay. The glue dries clear. And I've got that piece of leafery just kind of going whoosh off the top there. Love that. All right, now I'm gonna add my little palmy, my little pomegranate. And I'm gonna, I've got that piece right there that's kind of the edge of the leafery. I'm gonna add my little palmy right there. And she is going to like, kind of go under the leaf. Oops, I moved her. Go under the leaf and over top of the leaf so that she's kind of hanging off there. Now I've got a little gap right there. That's okay. I'm going to go in with a little bit of color. So that little gap between her and the leafery, just go in and I added a little bit of color right there. Let's bring that up so that you can see it. A little bit of color. So it kind of connects the palmy, the little pomegranate with her little leaf. Now, <laughs> friends, does anyone else see a shape inside this shape? There's a little heart that popped up here. I see hearts everywhere, everywhere. They pop up ev like at least a hundred times a day. I see them in different things. But as soon as I lifted this up, I'm like, oh, there's a little heart in there. How cute is that? Someone loves us. Someone absolutely loves us. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of glue here and nest this. Just a little bit of glue. And nest this around the edges and kind of pop that up underneath the leafery here. Just on the other side. And have our stick out a little bit. So we've got this really, we've got this shape here. We've got this leafery that's kind of breaking this shape. And then we've got palmies right here, just kind of coming out um, and giving us a little bit of fun motion going on here. All right, now, uh, Irma said, I see the heart. Yes. Okay, now it's time to nest the leafery. We're popping the leafery in. And then we're going to... Put the sentiment on. We're just rocking and rolling. Let's pop this leafery in. I've got this little, just adding the ephemera. <laughs> Cheryl just said, Lisa, you're so much fun. Great inspiration. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I'm just going to pop this in right here and just let it ride. And I didn't put, so the ephemera has like white around the edges. 
but so do my die cuts. What I really like about using this ephemera and the die cuts is that we've got all of this different kind of texture and dimension going. And it adds to some nice contrast and variety to the card, which makes it kind of fun. Oh, thank you, Irma. Very cute, very sweet. All right, I'm gonna add this piece of leafery. I'm just gonna add him right here. And then this piece, like right here. So I've got some contrast between my ephemera and my stamped image. My stamped image isn't a super duper solid because I stamped it on that, um, on that, um, oh Lord, looks like we got a spammer in here and I don't know how to get all, get rid of those. Oh, there we go. All right. Someone's spamming us. You're gone. Sorry about that. That's never happened to us on our live, getting a spammy spam. I must have said something that brought out the spammers. Okay. All right. So I've got this little piece of leafery that I'm going to put right here. And we've got that nice contrast between the leafery piece, which is printed, and the stamped image, which is not printed. All right. Just going around here, going around the edges here. Let's go ahead and add my piece of this piece of leafery beanery beanery no berry <laughs> I'm a goof I'm a goof all right I wanted that berry to just kind of roll in and nest right around that palmy right there so we just did that and I've got this extra piece I don't think I'm going to use it I don't think I'm going to use it I am I'm going to put my sentiment in first and I think I'm going to come down around here with it. So let's go ahead, put the sentiment in. The joy is going to come across here. I don't want, I don't want this sentiment to break the shape. Although I could go all the way out. If I go all the way out, we're going to end up seeing a little bit of this and I don't want that. So, you know, picky picky. So let's go ahead and and add a little bit of glue. I could pop this up, but I'm not going to do that either. And what I'm doing is I'm using that corner right here, that little edge of my leaf wreath that I just lifted up. And I'm going to nest this right underneath it and just kind of use that as my... See how that little piece of leaf wreath is right coming to that corner where the joy is. Oh, I ended up breaking the shape. All right, we're going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it because I really want that edge to be um, kind of seamless and go underneath that leafery there. All right, let's let that stick down. Ah, Catherine said this card is great. I'm thinking as a thank you. to Oh, great idea. A thank you for Thanksgiving hostess. Or Christmas for a cook. That is a great idea. All right, I'm going to take this piece of leafery right here. And I'm going to nest her right there. And she's breaking the shape a little bit. But what we've got here is a lot of movement. Splooshing out this way with our pomegranate. And I want to just draw your eye. So our eyes got this piece right here. And we're just going to whoosh, kind of go around this way. So we've got a lot of movement going this way and a grounding charcuterie board going that way. So there's some, there's always some kind of logic in my thinking sometimes, right? When I'm designing cards, but look at that. Wouldn't that be a fun tag if we didn't do it as a card? I'm going to take some of the Ruby slippers, pop some of these Ruby slippers down. Thank you, April. We've got lots of friends here with us today and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some, I'm going to go in and add some sequins, <laughs> sound effects. You know, friends, I do have a lot of sound effects, don't I? I just make things up as I go along. I'm going to pop some little bloops of um, glue and I did five. 
Yes, odd numbers are great, but do what you want. I've got the little jewel, um, the picking tool from Gina K. I'm still loving this because I was so picking tool challenged. Um, and this one's really gentle. Like I, you pick things up and when I drop it into the glue, it sticks. I used to have trouble with other ones. Everybody's saying they're loving this card. I am loving this card. I surprised myself when I created this card. <laughs> now, if you don't have the ephemera, remember, you don't need the ephemera. If you could do this with any stamp in your stash, of course, if you have the charcuterie board, it's helpful. Um, but as far as leafery goes, there's so many different leafery elements in so many different stamp sets beyond my stamp set that you could create this design pretty easily with something from your stash. So I'm digging it. Oh, I love it. I boogered something up. I think there was some um, ink on my, on my plate, my uh, platinum six plate. So it got a little boogery right there, but that's okay. But look at the charcuterie board. Look at the, look at the dark to light. That's why I didn't concentrate any of the dark color over on this side because we weren't going to see much of it. We've got that lightness here, a little bit of white popping through from the actual watercolor paper and the dark, the darker tones of the brown color of the vintage photos over on that side. It really does give it that wood grain look. All right, one more finishing touch. I almost forgot. I'm going to add a little bit of white with this Uniball Signo gel pen. Most of the time I use this. Dr. Bl Dr. Dr. Bleed Proof is what I was getting ready to say. Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which is just a paint. Um, because I am a little challenged with the gel pens sometimes, like getting them going. So this one wants to work for me today. So I'm just drawing in and dropping in just a few little whimsical dots. Do pomegranates have them? No. But my stamp project does. Just a few little whimsical dots. Instead of doing splatter like I normally would. This uh, I don't really like the way I dotted that, but that's okay. Just some few little whimsical dots just to add a little bit of bringing a little bit of that white. So you see that white in our sentiment um, with that black and white. This little bit of white right here in the palmies, in the little pomegranates, just kind of draws your eye back up to looking at that. It also adds layers of texture and dimension without adding layers. Ah, I love it. What do you think, friends? I am loving this card. Here was the original inspiration, so I didn't veer too far from it. Oh, I'm digging it. I am absolutely digging this card. All right, let's head back to the front camera. Um, I might need to put my glasses on. We'll see. Hello. That was super fun. I loved it. Loved creating that card. I love the Count It All Joy stamp set. The charcuterie board, I absolutely love. I need to put my glasses back on. Sorry about that. Um, it's just a fun, fun set. And mashing these two sets up is just super fun. My other set that um, my, that I have the pears, the pomegranates, this is number two in the fruit series. I've got another fruit one that I'm doing um, that'll come out next year uh, that I'm still working on. It'll come out late, like June-ish next year. So super fun to just kind of fill out this whole um, fruit kind of look and feel. But I'm loving the charcuterie. I love the way it looks. I think it's just great for the holidays. We had some fun, fun chatter about charcuterie boards and learning a little bit about that and the whole butter board thing that's pretty popular in um, out there in the world now. So I really hope you enjoyed this card tutorial today. I hope that my enthusiasm was infectious and it sends you into the weekend to craft your joy and create something fun. If you're getting started on your holiday cards, hopefully this gave you some inspiration. Remember, you don't have to use the exact same stamp sets that I used. If you have them and you want to, yay! But if you don't, 
use the ideas to inspire you with all the wonderful things that you have in your stash. So everybody's saying such beautiful and beautiful, nice things. Cheryl said it would make a great wine tag. That's true. Make an amazing wine tag for, for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or anytime or Friday, right? A wine tag for a Friday. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'm so grateful you joined me. I, um, it means a great deal to me that you could take the time to watch the live. If you're watching on the replay, if you have any questions along the way, or you watch this video again, just pop them in the comments and I'll be happy, happy, happy to answer. So next week I'm coming back and it looks like we're doing gift tags, friends. Looks like we're doing gift tags because everybody was interested. So let's do some gift tags and we'll do some colored pencil. And I'll do a little tutorial on color pencils and color pencil techniques. So, okay. Have a great weekend. Don't forget to get out all your supplies and craft your joy. And if you're interested in my world of things that I share and you're not on my email subscriber list and you would like to be, the link is in the description. I send an email out three to four times a month and it has everything all the things, when I'm gonna go live, when I've got new releases, what I'm working on, what's available in my shop, what's on sale, what is in my classroom, all the things that I like to share with you. I put all that stuff out in social media too, but I'm never really sure if everybody sees it all. So if you're on the email list, you get all the goodies and you get all the freebies and you get all the discounts, so super fun. So have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye friends.